This boat doesn't expand your horizons. It takes you to a whole new galaxy. It's that different um, compared to just about everything that I've driven on this channel so far. We are on uh, a vessel that has the capability to take you wherever the bloody hell you want in any conditions you like, and it's got the range to get you home. I'm on the Aquila Molokai 47. Welcome, Dan Jones is my name. You're watching Dan's Boat Life. If you want to see how this boat drives, it's it's blowing 30 knots steady, gusting to 35, 36, and we had four meter seas plus. What's that in, what's that in feet, Elaine? 12 feet. We had 12 feet, and I'd say, I say some of the big rollers were bigger than that and breaking at times. And we were gliding along at 30 mile an hour, not knots, feeling safe and comfortable, and we knew we were gonna get to our destination. And we even caught the drone. <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't confident that was gonna happen. So, I'm struggling to hide my excitement and I'm genuine about this. This thing is a, a bit of a game changer. For so many of you guys that write to me, whether you're here in America um, and you have a desire to run out to some of these islands in this part of the world, um, do your fishing, obviously. Um, if you're like my mate who's just been teaching me how to spearfish uh, and you want a big platform to operate from, that will do it. If you're like some guys I know running around in the Pacific or in Indonesia and want to go on surf trips, oh my God. Or if you're just a party guy or girl and you want heaps of space to socialize, it'll do that too. So, so there's a lot of use cases um, that I see possible for this boat. And, and jump into the comments and let me know what you would do with a boat like this, because she really is an epic platform. Um, so let's just get touring through. I'm on a bit of a time frame um, here because there's lots of people who want to tour and test this boat following the boat show. So she's a popular one. So we'll start out the back here. First things first, the upholstery is really, really high quality. It's good stuff. Not too hot in the sun, I note. We've got a couple of drained eskies, one here and one here. And then I also note that you can just pull this and you've got a, a basically a prep station. So that is also the design of it. Looks like it's gonna drain a little bit um, if you are making a bit of a mess. And then if you get behind this whoop, seat here, I, I knew that was in there, I just wasn't prepped. You can put all your bait. So you got a couple of drawers in here, put all your bait in there, and then that'll fold up like so just there. We've got drink holders on either side. Um, we've got this beautiful, highly polished rod holder um, you can hold your drinks and you put a couple of bits and pieces in the middle there. I don't even know what that's called because I'm not a professional fisherman. So if you do, please just pipe in and explain. But the, the amount of space we have here in a power cat that you can also put at a normal marina berth, it is noticeable. If you've come from a, a mono hull quad rig, you're gonna notice this. And I tell you, if you, if you setting up for some scuba diving or for some spear fishing this space makes a difference because you're probably with eight buddies or four buddies and you've got equipment and you've got things lying uh, on the deck so having that extra space really does help you and leads me to my next observation we have this epic swim ladder out the back here i've got some drone shots for you to see it from another angle but it just slides in and out of here so it's on good stainless steel tracks the these two doors just open here and you can operate it quite safely. Um, so you can board people whether they've got heavy equipment or we didn't do it today because it's too windy and we're running short of time. You could back this thing up to a beach. If you know what you're doing, and you're ready to deploy a stern anchor as well. You could back it up to the beach, board off this stern anchor and then carry your coffees from the, from the beach bar and, and pass them to your buddies. How cool is that? I just, I'm, I'm just getting excited. So engine options. We've got the quad 450Rs on this one. Uh, I think a lot of you are gonna be really happy with the V10 400s, to be fair, and she comes standard with the twin 600s. So um, 
I do think you need to have a, have a bit of a consideration as to how you're gonna utilize a platform like this as to what engine package you go for because servicing four engines is gonna be more expensive than servicing two. The fuel flow is pretty good on this thing. So watch the test drive video um, if you want to see. We did touch on that when I could because you know we had four meter Cs. But I don't think the fuel flow is gonna be the issue. It's really gonna be, do you need redundancy? Um, and with the quad engines, or are you happy uh, just to go for range with the twin 600s? Have a think about that and you do you. We've got rod holders out the back. I've got drop-in cleats on port and starboard. And then we have the first of many live bait tanks. So what's the volume of this one, Elaine? That's probably 42 and a half gallons. 42 and a half gallons each. So I don't even know what that is in litres. I'm still struggling with all the American versus Australian. So whatever that is, but it's a decent amount of size. But I did note on these port and starboard, um, just useful drained and not a bad place to throw some lines and just keep things handy and out of the way as you're moving about the boat. And we, we see that is a bit of a theme. So, the stern door is magnetically held open. That's the Coast Guard, by the way, saying don't go boating today, it's bad weather. <laughs> Let's go for you. Um, it's held open with a magnet, but if you want to close it, you have the little latch just here, and then you can actually pull this across the top to seal the transom like so. Um, this appears to be removable. It would it be removable? You can, you can, that's an option. Okay, so, so this is an option, all right. Um, but before I move forward, I just wanna to touch on both of these seats just here. So that comes out quite neatly, and you're gonna get three blokes here if necessary. We've got the same thing on starboard. And then um, it's quite easy to operate. The stainless steel on this boat is epic, but when it folds away, see how it tucks in behind this upholstery? So this seat is never really gonna get beaten up by the sun. So thinking from an operational perspective, I reckon you're only just gonna cover these primary seats. You'll probably leave this padding around the gunnels exposed and keep it simple for yourself. I would just probably personally, if this is my boat, cover the primary stuff, leave all this exposed. And with Australian sun, I assume the sun in Florida is similar. I'd just get this reupholstered in five or 10 years. That's all I would do. Um, so we got some technical spaces in port and starboard and they were different. So let's just go in and have a look in here. Now, I believe I could see some hydraulics and I could see some water management and pickups. I think that's for the uh, live bait tanks. Is that correct? That's correct. That's yeah. your hooker sea chest. So now, is my understanding is that on a high speed boat, they, that slows the water down so it doesn't kill the fish. Is that right? Correct. They're pressurized. So pressurized. They can control the flow to your line well so there you go. From we have a high speed and a low speed pickup. You, you've got a high speed and a low speed pickup. So from a non fisherman, I'm listening and I'm slowly learning. And once again, we have another one just here on port. It's a catamaran, so we have the same thing again on starboard. Now, if you are boarding people uh, on and off the dock, if you're hauling up fish in and out of the water, you have some options. So port side, and that's clearly very easy for boarding on the dock. Same again on the starboard side. And I, I, I'm gonna try and point out as much of this stainless steel as I make way around, way around the boat. Come in close, Elaine, just have a look. So there's stainless steel and there's stainless steel. When, they, when you don't see lots of bumps and imperfections, it means the stuff's gonna last a long time. And I have noticed that as I've been making my way around this boat. So just, just you guys should pay attention as well because the, the higher degree of polishing that they apply to stainless means that it's not gonna retain salt water and then it's gonna last longer because it's not, it's not rust proof, it will still rust. I hope, I hope that makes sense. So um, we're going to start focusing on this part of the boat and we'll go forward, but just if you need to get up to the roof, which you do in this part of the world because they have a lot of low bridges, uh, this morning it was so easy. We've got this flexi, uh, you know, soft teak decking that you could just use as a ladder, step up and then check your sight lines. If you need to drop the outriggers, they're just on a little winder, super easy to operate. And then we've got our Fleur 
system up here, our super bougie Raymarine radar. I'm not actually familiar with one of those, uh, but it looks very cool. I've got my VHF aerials, I've got my GPS aerials, I've got another one back here, I've got my navigation lights and more rocket launchers for rods. You're really not struggling for rod storage anywhere around this boat, so you can get the theme. The other thing that's pretty cool from an operational perspective, because like everyone likes to know the numbers. So if you're fishing, rather than being back here, having to call forward to the helm um, to get data that's gonna be relevant to what you're doing, you can just feed it to this screen right here. I think that's, that's quite cool. So all those backseat drivers, that's fine. <laughs> so the other thing is these Fusion speakers, they have been um, acoustically designed or tuned so anywhere that you move around this boat, you are experiencing stereo sound. Because um, that it kind of sucks on some boats when you are in the middle and it's pumping and you're getting the vibrations, then you come out here and it's all quirky. Um, so they've, they've actually designed that into this boat. And having these aft facing ones, I went to some sandbars down in Key West and the vibe is to step off and kind of party on the sand. And this allows you to do that, which is just, just kind of fun. So pay attention to that. Um, shore power plug-in is on this side. Sorry, shore power plug-in was over here. What am I saying? And fresh water shower was on that side. So that's my shore power in, and that my fresh water shower was just in here. There you go. So why don't we go, what was this one? Ah, fishing electric reel. So if you're bottom fishing and you need to, you don't have the strength to do that for too long. Okay, so that's what that's for. Okay, water in just here. And then we have more tackle storage just in here. And I saw a fridge in the same position on the other side. So is it an option to have a fridge here as well? Uh, we have an option for a summer kitchen. Okay. Somebody could theoretically as a custom request. But I reckon if you wanted to chill heaps of drinks, I'd be putting them underneath these seats here, load that up with ice, and then you've still got all this below deck storage. So, because there's quite a bit of capacity to load that up with drinks for the day, should you choose. Um, this is freshwater deck wash. We've just been using that because we were out in some big seas. Very convenient, bit of a luxury to be able to just give the boat a quick wash down. Midships, drop down cleats. Um, let's, let's come into the heart of the boat and try and give you guys a bit of a feeling. So you come around that way, Elaine, and I want you guys to try and soak this up. We have a raw water deck wash here, subwoofer, speakers. These are all deck lights, so it's gonna illuminate the floors uh, you know, without knocking out your night vision. This is the fuel intake and the fuel tank. There's two of them is just located below us just here and we have enough range to cruise at about 45 to 47 mile an hour for 800 nautical miles so call it 750 with a reserve so it's a long way a long way so let's let's come in here and just pay attention to what's going on these seats are the bougiest of bougie boat seats. So they're about 80 grand. It, you, it, it's the cost of a, a reasonable car, but I think you have to get them. They're so nice. I've seen these on a couple of boats now. The Comfort at speed um, or at any speed, whether you're leaning here or whether you're sitting down as a guest or behind the helm, it's pretty unmatched. The, the look of these things are just absolutely beautiful. But then the design, of this particular boat and what they have achieved. Um, imagine if you're here in Florida, imagine if you're in North Queensland, imagine if you're in Dubai, it's hot. Yes, we've got protection from the sun, but just, just have a look just here. We have air conditioning, air conditioning to, to spray that up your shorts. So you will be so much more comfortable. All the, all the guys at the helm have got air conditioning spraying on them and everyone at the second row does as well. We have uh, contactless charging, we have drink holders, we've got comfortable uh, footrests. So you could sit here and run for 60 miles, which on this boat won't be very long, and just be so comfortable. And what that equates for you guys, 
you know, if you're getting beaten up on a boat, if you're getting too much sun exposure, um, if the boat's bouncing around too much, you get tired. So then when you get to your destination where you're supposed to be having your fun, you have less energy to have fun. So that's quite important. So if, if you've got a boat that's just gonna glide across the way, it's gonna go really fast, keep you protected, keep you comfortable, um, it just means you've got more energy to do what you were intending to do for the day. So a couple of down lights, a couple of speakers overhead. I like how they've done the Aquila logo in stainless. Um, and then moving forward, we actually have bins on both port and starboard. So they just pull out. I'll cut to some shots of that. And then there's lots of places to put phones with charging and drink holders galore. So before I get to the helm, I'm just going to focus on a couple of things. They have the Dan step. I appreciate that. I'm only five foot seven. I didn't need the Dan step because the bow doesn't raise so much. So um, in four meter seas, I didn't use it. Just think about that. If you're coming from a big mono hole that raises its bow, this thing runs fast and flat. Um, if I was in a marina, perhaps, or coming into a busy area, or a sandbar, lots of boats around, and people in lines in the water, that's when I might use the, the Dan Step so I can see and be more safe. But I personally did not find that this hull required me to um, stand on that, which is impressive. Because I tell you what, that's not always the case. So this is just another little footrest for the guest on starboard. And on port, we've got these built in and we have a choice with one, two. So, the dash. Oh, this is just so well done. What I like about this, we've incorporated timber highlights. This feels like nine coats of varnish. Tell me if that's correct, but it feels like it. And looks great, but it hasn't been overdone. When you overdo the timber work, you, you, know, you, you have to look after it, essentially. Whereas here, we can just chuck cover on the seats, chuck a cover on the dash, it's out of the sun, so it's gonna stay in a good condition. We've got the Mercury throttle where it should be. We've got the joystick, easy at hand, so I can dedicate these two controls for my throttle hand. My steering hand, obviously, is gonna be the left hand on this one, and it was really, really comfortable. With the adjustable wheel, I've got a decent amount of space, but these seats will go forward and back as well if you need to create more. And then transiting, you do have the flip-up bolsters, so see how, with my length of legs, I would actually step on this footrest here if I wanted to get up, and I'd be sitting like this when I'm on autopilot, eating up the miles. If I'm actively driving in rough weather, or you know, in the harbour or around here with other boats, I'm probably not gonna be in that position. I'm gonna be in this position. We'll see all that back, lower back support I have just here. It's, it's very good. So that's well designed, throttle in the right position, wheel feels good visibility from me standing straight over the dash without bow rays i've got full control no reflection from this darker colors here so i can do it on a hot day and a decent amount of overhang from this roof design just here meaning that the midday sun isn't going to belt down on this windscreen and once again block my visibility so i i, I like everything that's happening here. Somebody is thinking about this from a design perspective. Black pillars, once again, these two corner pillars wasn't a problem from a visibility safety perspective. You always have to watch that. Some boats make them too thick. I didn't find that a problem at all. VHF, boat systems, stereo, that's the hooker, which is what we saw back there before. Uh, another down light, down speakers as well. There is, I, I lose count of how many speakers there are on this thing, there's so many. We've got the sea zone. Now I've seen this on plenty of boats before. This is really user friendly. Basically, um, day, night, when you're using the boat, you just set it to cruising, basically. When you're not using it, you set it to night mode or not using whatever it is. It's very user friendly because it'll operate all the switches for you. So I would always focus on the sea zone, but what you have behind us here is the ability to use all of these switches in a backup in this system just here incorporated with the Raymarine. But then you have a backup for the backup. Now that's airplane stuff. If you've got a backup and a backup for the backup, um, it, we're, we're looking good. So, so I like seeing that. We're running the quad rigs. If you're a fisherman and you want backups for the backups because you go really far, that makes a lot of sense. Um, I don't know what that is. What's that's that? That's the uh, 
courtesy lighting. Oh. So all your track lighting. Oh, okay. Lights. Okay, cool. Um, so then we've got uh, drink holders. We've got a really fancy storage area with charging uh, for more phones and equipment. So I really would be throwing a lot of electronics in there for my day out. Um, and I think I've covered everything. This this is how you operate the outriggers, guys. You just wind them. Um, it's I can just reach them, but uh, I need to actually stand up a little bit to get some power into that. Um, let's go forward. I'm going to open up some of these deck hatches as we make our way forward. And at the end of this, we'll go down into the cabin because that's really what sets this boat apart from the rest, in my opinion. It's, it's truly amazing. Uh, okay. So this is drained. Um, yep, half drained just here. That's pretty deep and you'll get quite a lot of ice and fish in there. And we're going to have another one, same location on the starboard side. Pay attention to the windows. So just imagine when you drive uh, out into the ocean and you get into the deep water on a clear day, you know how the ocean starts to get really transparent, really beautiful? Imagine running, sitting in that seat, looking through that window and you'll just see the ocean going past you. It's gonna be quite a good experience. I reckon that's gonna be one of those memories that you won't forget. So let me just, I think I might have to stand on that one. Boom. And okay, I'll do the other side. It might be locked. Push it down. We'll do the other side. That's okay. Sure. Hey, there we go. There we go. There's always a solution. Okay. So this one. Oh, check it out. It goes forward. Oh my god. Okay, so now my feet are touching this. So you could you could get like massive fish in here it, with that sort of capacity. And if you're treating this boat as a bit of an adventure boat and you want to store swags and other bits of kit, that's a good place for it as well. I'm just gonna do that one and that one. Let's turn that VHF off. Yes, we know it's bad weather. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have fuel in on the other side, same location. We got waste out, so that's going to be for the head. And pay attention to the grab handles just here. Again, this is going to be uh, for safety because so we're going from midships forward is the logical place where you might need to hold on because if you get a bit of vertical, vertical acceleration through waves, but it's also a good place to tie on fenders. So just think about that. And I like that it's been designed like this, so you're not gonna catch on it. In here is the toilet. It is super cool. I'm gonna come back to that, keep watching. Come forward and check out the bow because it's, it's very impressive. So this to me is a multi-function setup. We've got these beautiful cushions here. This is high quality leather. So if you're doing the whole chilling out vibe thing, you could even use some of the rod holders to get a fancy umbrella, one of those ones with tassels and make it kind of kind of cute. Set this whole area up if you want. And then if you're in fishing mode, you could probably piss these off, put them downstairs in the cabin, and then it's in fishing mode. You want to walk around and cast, you can do that. So that's kind of how I see this area working for some of you, but come right up the front and let's have a look at the anchoring setup. Okay, so see how we've got quick electric anchor windlass here. It's operated from here, but we can also do it from the helm. And then we've got, uh, this is to operate the clutch. This is a safety just here. And then we have a second safety just here and this big chunky bit of stainless redirecting it because obviously we're a catamaran, so we don't have much below us here in the middle. Whereas we do have space and volume below us here on starboard and port. And then you go through here to get into the chain locker, which we can have a quick look at on the other side because that is also accessible. But on the port side, you might use that as a little bit of storage, I suspect. Let's have a look. Okay, so we've got a freshwater wash down, another one, and then have a look inside. And pay attention to the flow coating and the quality of the finish. I have been opening up a lot of hatches on this boat today and 
it's it, it's it's good nick it's good stuff people someone cares by the way they're finishing the underside of the hatches the inside of the hull um, all the latches and catches seem to have been done to a very high standard so that's something that i'm, I'm pretty happy to see we've got multiple drop down cleats up the front uh, which are going to be useful for all sorts of scenarios but now let's let's focus on this you can't the ergonomic design of these seats is epic and this is a boat that i would run at speed in many many conditions including some of the stuff we're in today and allow guests to sit in the front obviously just do it when they're going to stay dry but uh, it's such a soft landing hull you're going to be able to accommodate people up here at speed and they're not going to ruin your sight line from a visibility perspective so girls if you want to sit up here have a drink and run at 50 miles an hour with the wind in your hair you can do it so that's cool to see you're never going to struggle with rod storage so if you need to target a different species and grab your setup you can do it we've got life uh, jacket storage in here we've got more um, sensibly designed so I think you could slot things in there and also keep some of your items dry and bucket storage it's all drained by the way and same again under here and just look at how it's been finished with the gas struts and the high quality kit good to see more drop down armrests really really good so I think I've covered all of that we've got more plug-ins for uh, electric reels if you need got some windows it's i'll quickly point out some of the features we have here on the bow um, on the windscreen we've got forward facing leds we've got a raymarine camera just there more speakers and then we've got the fleur i, I would actually go for a fleur on something like this because you might want to run fast at night and depending where you are you know if there's lobster pots in the water or something like that it's going to be a handy piece of kit so you can maintain those high speeds and, and do it safely essentially so come and let's have a look at the accommodation because it's the standout feature of this boat. Come on. So come down, guys. This is truly one of the standout features of this boat. And I, I believe the reason why many of you will opt for this over some of the other big power cats uh, out there on the market today. Because look at this. Look at this. We've got a proper island queen size. Would this be a queen size? Yep. Queen size double bed you can sit up in bed we've got the reading lights we've got the opening hatches that's going to get cross flow ventilation we can knock out the sun if it's too hot the whole thing's ac'd as well we've got uh, adequate storage on the side of the bed you know just remember it's really for zooming fast to a location and staying for one or two nights or checking into a hotel and going fishing and then having the option to get out of the sun and, and you know, recline and have a rest. So it's not about going away for weeks and weeks and staying in this cabin, so hence the amount of storage. We've got pull down blinds on, uh, on either side, opening window, but you can see from this window through the next window. So once again, picture yourself looking at that blue water. It's gonna be really awesome in here, but it, it doesn't end. So we've got a TV and we've got the AC uh, venting to us on the bed and I just um, maybe you go up that way Elaine let me just point out to everyone we are on a catamaran so underneath us in the middle it's going to be empty void because the holes are on either side so hence the toilet is on that side so if you want to go to the loo in the night you get out of bed on that side but if you don't want to roll over your partner you have another option you, you actually have a door over here so before we get there i've got my key on and then i've just got some electrical access behind the helm and we even have more storage space i won't open the whole thing but it's underneath these stairs so i would probably keep something like a dyson vacuum cleaner under there or maybe in here um, wire it up so it's nice and easy keep this area super clean for myself and starting and finishing the day is going to be done just here where the keys are but come straight around to this side. So, there's a couple of unique things to this. We've got a proper door just here. Look at that. Look at that stainless once again. So this, 
This is your access. So if you're if you're sleeping on the starboard side of the bed and you don't want to roll over your partner, this is how you do it in the middle of the night. But this is also the day head because come on down. We've got this proper loo, which is also a stand up shower with shower doors just here. You've got storage, we've got vanity, we've got AC, we've got the fancy tapware and all that sort of stuff. But if you are using this in day action mode, see that? They've just utilized some sail track essentially. And you can, uh, we've got press studs just here. You could secure this just along here and completely protect that side of the boat. So whether somebody just wants to be there resting or whether you just want to lock it off from all your dirty mates for the day while you have your adventures, you can. So that's clever design utilization. I like seeing new ideas coming out on boats because what do we have? We have a limited amount of space to utilize and we want to make the best use of that space. So I, I really enjoy seeing that. So come on up to the front. We'll wrap the video right away because we are, as I said, we're on a time limit. So actually I'll just sit up here and close right up here. So guys, if you're a fisherman, I think the argument is there and it's pretty obvious, but if you are more than that, if you have uh, you know, serious adventures, you could go to other countries in this boat. You could tow this behind your other boat. It is an option they can uh, strengthen the bows uh, from the factory if you wish to do that. Um, if you are a surfer, if you are a scuba diver, if you're a spear fisherman, and if you are a social boater, this thing will do all of that. That's why I'm so excited. Finally, you need to look at the price. It's really keenly priced. So I'll leave a link to the dealer below because wherever you are in the world, just find your local dealer. The pricing for this size boat and what it's being offered and being built to this standard, I would say this is an American standard of build. It's super impressive. It, it, it really is. So if you like this boat and you wanna see how it drives, it's blowing 30 knots, 35 at times, four meter seas offshore, we've just done that. I almost lost my drone, but we didn't. So please click on the link somewhere right now. Come for a drive with this. Let me know what you think about this boat. Is this a good direction for Aquila? Is this something that gets you excited? It's certainly got me excited. Let me know what you think. My name's Dan Jones. You've been watching Dan's Boat Life. Subscribe, like, share it with your mates. See you on the next one.